Should we start? You might need to pour yourself some wine. It is I mean, it is afternoon somewhere. It is 8.15. Hi, everybody. I'm Eli Cairo. This is beautiful Portland, Oregon. We're in my backyard. We're making strata today out of stale bread. We're going to have some apples, some gouda, some beautiful kielbasa. We're going to cover it in Mornay sauce with some gruyere and some crunchy salt and some honey. It's going to be delightful. We're going to eat it. I'm going to try not to burn it, and it's going to be fun. Estrada, I think, is a fancy word for a savory bread pudding. I think strata comes from layers, at least that's what I've always heard, because when you chop up your bread and you bake it in the custard, it makes all these real fancy layers. It's used kind of as an ultimate brunch dish, but if you make it savory enough, you could have it for a lunch and a dinnery type thing. So strata in my family, my family's Greek. My mom baked bread pretty much every other day my entire childhood. I don't think it's necessarily a Greek dish, but I do think it's very, <laughs> my family and Greek, not to waste anything, especially mom's bread. So I don't know, maybe other people that are Greek have had this happen. Deep thoughts, internet, let me know. The two main ingredients are stale bread. We used sandwich bread to show that you can, but you can honestly use any stale bread. If it's, if it's too fresh, you're gonna wanna throw it in the oven so it kind of dries out more and it'll suck up all the moisture. The other two ingredients that are very important are the eggs and milk. That's pretty much it. The rest of it is up to your imagination. You can kind of get crazy from there. For ours, since we're going apples, apple and gouda, but we went uh, goat gouda, it's delicious. Gruyere, a little bit of mustard, salt. So this is strata wood. Then over here we got Mornay World. Flour, got some butter, got some more Gruyere. Nutmeg, key to pretty much every custard. I'm gonna put a little nutmeg in there. Oh yeah, this is key. Talk about that right now. Step one, most important thing is you, you could do this way earlier is you gotta get your bread soaking. For this recipe, we're gonna do uh, six eggs, one cup of milk. So that's about six eggs is obviously to the point one cup. Boom, throw that in there. You wanna always season it. Boom, a little pinch of salt. You need some mustard. That's exactly two teaspoons. <laughs> nutmeg is, I'm a huge fan of nutmeg and custards, all dairy things. And also, when do you get to use nutmeg? Man, it's like, just a little dabble, do you? A couple scrimps, you know? But it makes everything taste good. It makes everything taste nutmeggy. When was the last time you've been like, ooh, nutmeg's really good? Been a minute. So treat yourself, you know what I mean? As you can tell, we're doing this outside because it's beautiful. And every time I get an opportunity to cook outside, I do. Put your oven on, 350. That's always nice. It's like the 350 is the friendliest baking number. You almost can't screw it up, you know what I mean? So then you gotta chop your bread up. Again, you're trying to make little layers, strata, we talked about this, the different little layers inside of it, but don't, if you have four different types of bread, you're okay. Just cut them kind of equal sizes. So we're going for about, for that much, one cup, we're gonna do about four cups, and my hand's the perfect cup measurement, as you can tell. Did you, that? What is that? Nutmeg. How often do you use nutmeg? Twice? Holiday time? What did it ever do to you? Four cups. Then you're gonna to wanna to get it in there to soak. So if you're way on it and you made this the night before, you're gonna have a better strut. It's gonna get a little bit more like pudding -y. The least amount of time you're gonna to wanna to marinate is about 15 minutes like we're gonna do right now. We're gonna just, it's gotta get in there at least enough to suck it up. It's soaking, that's what it's doing. It's custarding. Show the camera. Show the camera. We're gonna get this out of here for a minute and let it chill. As we said, this is a one pan extravaganza. Get the pan going. Looking at it like a little medium hot right here. And so I use the same pan because we're gonna keep all the oil. So what you do is you get a little bit of butter, about that much butter, melt it up, boom. 
what we're going to do now is we're going to put in the kielbasa. The only reason we're putting in the kielbasa right now is so we'll crisp up the outside of the kielbasa. So when it's in there and you're getting a nice bite of it, it'll have that crunchy texture on the outside. When I make my kielbasa, I try to make like the most traditional Polish sausage I possibly can. To me, it's got to have high fat. You, like it's an oxymoron to be like a low fat kielbasa. That's like an ugly Brad Pitt. It just doesn't exist. It's got to have fresh garlic. I use fresh garlic. If you're using garlic powder, just look at yourself and be like, hey, it comes to find out I'm lazy. And then mustard seed, what I do is I take dried mustard seed, a big old batch of them, and I bring them up in white wine vinegar so you get little pickled mustard seeds, which is also traditional in there. And then you fold it all together, you grind it, and then you smoke it. <laughs> Top five types of sausages, because you, in all beef frankfurter is top sausage, hard to beat in the entire world. Second one, because I'm a purist in that way, is a bratwurst. Also, little insider facts about bratwurst, why we might like it so much. Got a little nutmeg in it. Third one, can I say it? Kaisekreiner? The greatest sausage ever. So Kaisekreiner is a traditional Austrian sausage, and what it has is it's, it's usually with white pepper, also an underrated spice, smoked over applewood or a very sweet wood, and it's studded with Emmentaler cheese. So when you cut into it, the cheese runs out of it. Fourth one, spicy Italian sausages. Can you live without a spicy Italian sausage? You need it. Pasta sauces, what do you do with your red peppers? Grilling, if it's hot out, you don't want maybe a bratwurst, maybe you do. Did I already say kielbasa? Fifth one, kielbasa. For the apple, Braeburn, good baking apples. But then again, don't go extra to the store to go get yourself a fancy apple. Use the apple you have. Well, a little bit of the kielbasa grease in there. A little brown butter, onions. So now we're just gonna cut those into little chunks. Don't burn the onions. See, if they look burnt, that's the brown <laughs> brown butter. Throw in your, your onions. <laughs> Throw your apples into your onions. It's the salad part of your strata. Got your kielbasa. Key ingredient. It's gotta have a little bit of sugar. It's sweet. Not sweet like breakfast sausage sweet, but you gotta have a little sugar. If you don't have sugar in it, what are you making, a smoked non-kielbasa? <laughs> Put it all together. Now it's starting. Now you're like, oh, I see. It's starting to become a one pot thing that we were talking about, huh? Thought I was lying to you. So there's your custard, not too overmixed. Still seeing a little bit of bread. See that right there? If we would have let it soak all night, it'd be inside there. But that's okay. Looking a lot like a one pot. Ooh, don't you forget about the cheese. I like to chunk it so when it mixes in there, the uh, yeah, it doesn't like melt away. You get might get lucky and you might get a big piece and it gets all like stringy. It's important, but you still want to keep it kind of separate. That's the problem about using sandwich bread as opposed to like a little bit. Got to be a little gentle. Put it in the pan. So, you know, on this one I can already tell you, it looks like my bread ratio is a little off. I'm not gonna worry about it, Ben. My oven, or the green egg here, is at around 400, but if you're at home, put it in your oven at 350. That's a nice, safe temperature. Let it cook all the way through. Strata's in. Now we hang out. We go fishing, is what we do. This, in this oven, since it's at like 400, man, I, I, I hope it, it'll be done in about 25 minutes. But at home at 350, you're probably more upwards in the 45 minutes. So, Sauce Mornay. Ooh, let's talk about Sauce Mornay real quick, shall we? Mornay is essentially bechamel with cheese folded in it, right? That's what I've always been taught. That's what you've been told. That's what, that, that's, that's what it is, right? Comes to find out Mornay came first. So bechamel is Mornay sauce without cheese in it. Mornay was first and somebody got lazy and left the cheese out and they're like, yeah, call it bechamel. I bet that bechamel guy. Think about him. What is he doing now? Famous. Melt the butter. <laughs> You're making a roux. Also classic. See, roux definitely, roux came before both bechamel and Mornay. Can't make a, can't make either without a roux. That's what you're looking for. Kind of looks like, 
<laughs> it looks like flour and butter melted together. Mornay is a white sauce. You don't want to toast your, your uh, roux or your flour. You're going to keep it nice and white. Key to this, this is obviously a cup. We're going to, once you pour it in, give it a good whip. I'm trying to get all the uh, roux to go away and not scorch the bottom. By that I mean not make clumps and melt into this. Thin it out, whip, boom. Looking good right there. I ask you, what time in the Bejimo process is this? It's your favorite time. Beautiful, glorious, nutmeg. A little pinch of salt, boom. A little bit of nutmeg, just a touch. Did you look at it? Remember, we talked about this earlier. Just a touch, that's all you want. Key number two to making uh, Mornay or Bejimo. Right now it's at the Bejimo steak because there's no cheese in it. Uh, so the Bejimo did come first. Oh, Jess, come on now. It just came first by default. But when you make it roux in a Bejimo, what you got to do is you got to uh, cook the flour out. You don't, now that it's thick, you're not done. You got to let it sit there. You got to cook it for about 10 to 15 minutes because if you eat it right now without it coming to a boil and slowly cook it, it tastes like raw flour. But taste it though. Get in there. Mm. Nutmeg? Let's take a look here. Make sure we're not on fire. Oh, would you look at it, Jess? See the beauty of a Teflon? It's sliding around in there. See that little bubbles right there? That kielbasa fat. You got some other stuff going on in there. You got your strata in the oven. It's baking away. You got your Mornay doing its simmering over here. Simmering away. Uh, I think it's time to do a wine talk. This one here, stick figurine. Syrah Rosé, my beautiful wife Jess makes this. Makes it in our garage or in our basement. Oh, this one here. You ever heard of that band, The White Stripes? First time you hear it, like, there ain't no way they made that in a garage with a guitar and a drum. There's just way too much soul, way too much going on. It makes you feel all those feelings. You don't know what's going on. You know what they've always said, at least I've always said, rosé is like the orange juice for cooking in the woods. You know what I mean? It's like vitamin C, deliciousness. What says 8.30 in the morning looking at a beautiful siesta more than rosé? Ain't nothing. First off, we're going to take you on the tour of the yard. We got to introduce you to the way better part of my team, the film, Jessica Rose Harris. <laughs> Way more important, the maker of the most amazing personal favorite stick figurine wine. Our backyard's awesome. We found it like the first year we started dating. This is like pretty much downtown Portland. It's in an area called Mount Tabor. The first year we were dating, it went for sale. And Jess was like, could you imagine that somebody actually planted a, a vineyard up on Mount Tabor? Veg garden. This is, Jess gets to hang out in there all the time and hang out and make wine. And I toil in the, uh, the veg garden. What you got in there? Did you look at it? Huh? A little cauliflower. Coming along through. And this is the one we're having for dinner tonight. Ooh, it's turning purple. We got to get it out tonight. Welcome back after the tour. That's what we're looking for. Quick test to see where you're at is that you might want to take a knife or a skewer. We're just put it right in the middle there. And you're gonna hold it for a second and put it on your lip. It's way too hot. It's way too hot. You're ready to roll. Ow! Would you that? Why would you do that? Anyway, so we'll finish the Mornay. Put the grated Gruyere, Swiss cheese. Some say the best cheese. And my white sauce with flour didn't really work out as perfect as I want. So I'm gonna take some of the clumps out. If you get some clumps, go ahead and fold it in there. Put it through a sieve. Just be proud of it. I don't think she'd be proud. She'd be like, hey Eli, why is your Mornay sauce clumpy? Then you fix it, and you're like, look at Jess, it ain't, it ain't clumpy. And then she'll be like, oh, what is that? And I'll be like, nutmeg. See, nice and cheesy. Some would say very, that's very, very Mornay-like. Would you look at it? 
Well, you know, you know what that would go good on? Anything, Ben. Burrito. Heck. No, it's not true. Don't put it. Don't put it on a burrito. Down for a second. Put this on top of it, maybe. Ready for this, Ben? I see you're nervous. What if it sticks? Or what if it doesn't? What if it just looks like a beautiful strata? And you're like, hey, look it. Why'd you use a Teflon? And I'm like, that's why, Vin. It's all caramely. It's beautiful. Oh, make sure your Mornay's nice and runny. Put it in your, it's a gravy boat. You gotta take a gravy boat camping or are you even camping? Yeah. <laughs> Crunchy salt on there. Boom. You got yourself a little bit of honey. What I usually do is I take it like this and you, you take it to the table. Right, this is your everybody been hung over. You show up and you're like, hey, how about last night? <laughs> Welcome to camp breakfast. Little little pie nubbin right there. Uh, if you look at it, some strata. Looks pretty good. Got kielbasa, your egg. You pour some hot mornay over it. Maybe do one of those numbers. Kind of like that. Some cheesy goodness. essentially fondue just done for breakfast if you think about it right then what you're wanting to do is drizzle some of this it's honey ooh six ranch honey from the Wallawas kind of get all over there oh my goodness what do you think huh did you eat that it's still warm of course you don't want it cold mm. oh my god it really is like fondue oh my god it's the texture's per like the strata is all perfect. The bread's all full of moist. <laughs> the cheese is unreal. That's insane. Cause you get the honey and the crunchy salt and the cheesy goodness. And you got a little, little dipping over here, right? You got nothing better to do. Maybe I don't know. Drink some more rosé. Jess, you know, forget about some stuff. Just relax for a minute. Yeah. Uh -huh. God, you know what? There's in there. Nutmeg. Hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Tell us what you'd like to see us cooked outside. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Come visit us in beautiful Portland, Oregon at Olympia Provisions. And uh, thanks for watching.